Listen, guys, you know me. I typically like to be patient. I typically like to wait. I don't like to jump the gun when it comes to these storms. I like to report to the averages and some of my thoughts. Sometimes I'll give my opinion, but man, all right, sometimes we just have one model showing that a storm could be bad. But we've got multiple models. We are starting to get a consensus that this could very well be the big one, the one that causes a lot of damage, the one that causes a lot of storm surge, that one that causes a lot lot of problems for folks out there so what we're going to be doing in this forecast is breaking down every single thing that you need to know about future hurricane helene i do think it is a likely chance that this becomes a hurricane whether or not it becomes a major hurricane is still kind of up for debate but man we've got a lot of models coming in i mean we haven't seen this all year usually we have that consensus you know we had a, the three storms that have made landfall in the united states usually we have that consensus that we maybe we have one or two big time models, but most of them are averaging out around that category one, category two strength. But man, we have got way too many models saying that this storm could be the big one, cat three or higher. So we're going to break that down in this forecast. All right, this is the visible satellite imagery here of um, what is to be future Helene. Here you can see we got some bubbling cloud tops uh, around this storm, not directly over the center but getting there uh, this thing is definitely organizing you know you can see that there is we're already starting to see some uh you know north to south movement over here we've got a little bit of south to north movement right here i'm thinking that low pressure uh, of this storm is somewhere within this region here and you can see we do have some convection on the right side switching over to the 3d satellite view of looking at the cold cloud tops this just indicates how you know strong some of the thunderstorms are within the storm right now. This again, still isn't a tropical depression or storm yet, but we are like days from landfall with this thing. This thing's gonna scoot up to the north. Some of the models are saying pretty quickly, I mean, we could be talking about Thursday and today is Monday. So, you know, not too long before this thing makes landfall. So that's why we're gonna be kind of doing a little bit more, making a little bit more of a riskier forecast this time. You know, it could be wrong. It'll probably have a light, higher likelihood to be wrong, but because we have such short time to be paying attention to this storm, you know, uh, it, 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 we, need, we, need, we need answers and we need to try to find them as good as possible. But you can see this thing definitely has a decent A amount uh, of thunderstorm activity on the right side of it. You can see we're already starting to see these black and white colors. This indicates that uh, this storm right now has some pretty healthy thunderstorm activity on the southeastern and eastern side of it, uh, indi indicating that this thing is trying to organize already uh, into a tropical depression. Once that lower uh, level spin really, you know, that surface spin, that surface low pressure really gets going, which it already seems like it's trying to do, we're probably going to get a designation of a tropical depression or storm with this. Speaking of, you know, the chances of this thing forming uh, over the next couple of days, we're at 80 percent, 80 percent. As you can see that the two day is at 80 percent. We have an overall high chance of this forming. And again, this is going to be Helene. It's going to most likely travel out of the Caribbean in the Gulf of Mexico, where there is certainly an environment for this storm to strengthen. We're not going to be dealing with as much dry air or as much shear as we've been dealing with some of the other storms like Francine, Debbie, and Barrow. So once this thing gets going, there's not going to be a real, there's really not going to be a whole lot to stop it. So it's, it's not looking good. I'll be brutally honest. But obviously, it's not as easy as looking at a satellite imagery to try to determine the strength of the storm. So let's kind of break down the different scenarios that this storm could do uh, as we go into the future. Quick, we just had some breaking news here. We just got a cone of uncertainty with this storm. As you can see, as of 11 a.m on Monday. This has been uh, designated as a potential tropical cyclone nine. So still not a tropical depression, but it, it but basically what this designation means is that this thing is getting its act together. And as you can see by these H's, it is you know, forecasted to be a hurricane. Let's go see what the National Hurricane Center is saying uh, for the strength of this storm. There you go. Disturbance uh, forecasted to strengthen over the next few days. Tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings or watches, sorry, issued for portions of Mexico uh, and Cuba. If we come over here to the forecast discussion. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're already calling for almost a category three. And this is just their initial forecast. They're kind of like me. They like to be, uh, you know, pretty conservative. And as you can see, they're already calling the 110 miles per hour is literally one 
miles per hour off of a category three. And I do believe, you know, it is certainly possible we could get to category three, category four, can't even completely rule out a category five hurricane. Now, will that be a category five at landfall? That's still to be determined, but this is certainly going to be a powerful storm. The environment is lining up and you can see even the experts at the National Hurricane Center are thinking the same thing. So we've really got to pay attention to this storm and to see what it's going to do over the next couple of days. Now, one of the things that we'd look at, uh, you know, in order to determine where these storms are going to go are what we call the spaghetti model plots. And it's basically like a big old plate of spaghetti that kind of gives you a picture of what the different scenarios of this storm can do. So as you can see, you know, almost every single one of these are going into Florida. So, you know, earlier, about a couple of days ago, a day or two ago, we had a huge model spread, meaning that there was a lot of uncertainty. We really didn't know if this thing was going to go you know, and then as time progresses, you start to see a tightening uh, of that uncertainty. Now you can see that uncertainty circle is about this big. So we're still talking potential impacts from southern Alabama all the way down into areas like Tampa, Florida. But it seems like the highest chance of landfall is going to be somewhere within this region in between Destin, Panama City, you know, Cedar Key, Perry, Florida, Eric, Tallahassee around in those regions. So you guys, if you live in any of those areas you definitely need to be paying attention we don't have super tight consensus just yet so there still is a little bit of uncertainty but as you can see we've got a lot of these pink um, and even uh, kind of darker pink uh, purple colors indicating that this could be you know a category three and above as this thing approaches landfall we even have one model indicating that you know it could be a category four um, you know maybe even getting close to a category five as it approaches landfall and even some of the hurricane models are really bullish on that so we're going to be checking out all of that here but this is what you know we're talking about in terms of the model spread right now our latest spaghetti model plots and now we're going to go look at the intensity and then hop over to the models all right so this is the intensity here the intensity guidance you know we got a lot of model runs that go off and we get a we get a kind of an average here of everything and as you can see you know this thing you know the averages here are putting this in between a category two and a category four we still have time uh for this to change but, I, you know, unfortunately, I don't think there's a lot of room for error, um, you know, for this to change to be a much weaker storm. It just doesn't seem like the environment is going to be that unfavorable. I think a good guideline is going to be somewhere between category three or category two and category four and potentially higher. We could definitely get a scenario uh, where this thing rapidly intensifies. And sometimes when that happens, it just doesn't stop. It just keeps intensifying and keeps intensifying. And then all of a sudden you got a pretty strong category four or category five storm on your hand all right now we're going to be looking at the models this is some of the our hurricane models we're going to be looking at every single one it gives you a really good zoomed in view um, with high resolution of what these storms could do and this is the hwrf model and pushing this forward you can see that you know it's still in the caribbean there's cuba over here and there is the yucatan peninsula on the left and this thing is forecast to kind of thread the needle there when that happens this thing stays over those warm waters without really interacting with land too much so this thing could easily strengthen i mean look at this uh we are talking let's go see uh we are talking uh september 23rd 2024 that's when this was initialized and this is two days from now all right wednesday this thing is already in the gulf of mexico this is early morning wednesday and this thing is already a strong category two or a category three hurricane at this point so h hwrf right out the gate really strengthening this storm a lot and then look at that looks like the minimum pressure here is around 926 so that would be a very strong storm uh, over the Gulf of Mexico. And then as it approaches land, it weakens a little bit, but it makes landfall somewhere over there near, you know, kind of like near like the, uh, the over there where Perry, Florida is south of Tallahassee um, right there on the coast. And look at that. I mean, that is a strong storm. And keep in mind, this is on Thursday. This is like Thursday morning uh, here. So we're talking, we're talking uh, Thursday morning. This thing is making landfall, which is, you know, again, three three days out from now, you know, it, 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 like almost exactly three days out from now. So, you know, now is the time to start preparing. If you haven't already, I know a lot of you guys have plans to prepare throughout the season, but most people don't do that until something is bearing down on them. And if you've been waiting uh, for, you know, the, the queue to go prepare, now is the time. It's certainly looking like this could be uh, the storm of the year. I mean, this could be, this is legitimately be the strongest storm to make land fall in the United States this year. But I mean, but look at this.
this. I mean, 932 at landfall, we're seeing winds of up to 110 knots. I mean, that's a category four hurricane, uh, almost a category four, like, uh, you know, somewhere in between a category three, category four um, at landfall. So even though it weakens a little bit, it's still a strong storm. That's going to cause a lot of storm surge, a lot of wind damage, a lot of power outages, a lot of roof damage, a lot of, um, you know, big waves as well with the storm. Flooding is also possible. And, you know, unfortunately, this is the average. This is the average here. So, um, you know, we're going to go look at some other models. But as you can see, very strong winds, and that makes landfall. All right, this is the uh, the H uh, the HAFSA model. And as you can see, this thing is approaching land on Thursday, a little bit later on Thursday, around 3 or 4 p.m., according to this model, and a little bit further uh, to the left. But you can still see, I mean, we're kind of in the same area, in this little bend here uh, of Florida. And look at that, 925 at landfall. You've got winds over uh, 125 knots this is a category four hurricane on the borderline of a category five hurricane so this is a very uh strong uh scenario here by the hafs and this storm i mean this model did really really good on a lot of the other storms in the past and it's you know it's 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 kind of been the model i've been leaning on uh this year and look at that i mean pretty much rapidly intensifies right out of the gate and then by landfall this thing is causing major impacts there max winds of 125 knots that's a strong storm, folks. This is one you're going to need to prepare for. You know, again, I do not say this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I don't take this lightly. I like to really focus on accuracy. You will never hear me, uh, you know, overhyping a storm. And this one, this one is bad. This is bad. This is not hype. This is uh, apparently what is looking like a grim reality. But I will say there is one model that might give us a little hope, but it all depends on what happens here initially. This is like, this is again, unfortunately, an outlier. This is one of the only models that is saying that this is possible. So just keep that in mind. You know, usually when we talk about these things, the outlier is the strong one. Well, now the outlier is the weak. Um, as you can see, we've looked at a couple of models and they all are very, very strong. But the Euro says this thing struggles all the way in. So, you know, if this thing enters into the Gulf of Mexico, past the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba as a tropical depression or storm, then, you know, it, 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 we have a lower chance of this thing being a major hurricane this could maybe be a category one according to the euro it deals with too much dry air the shear is a little bit higher um and you know it comes up to make landfall uh, as a weaker storm so it kind of still in the same area uh the timing we're talking about here is a little bit uh kind of the same as the last model we just looked at sometime in between three to four uh for landfall there um but yeah i mean this is uh you know this could be our our beacon of hope here that you know we're not going to get a big hurricane but we'll see i mean you know, uh, all the models are saying something different. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, they are agreeing on the strength right now, which is pretty rare. But let's go look at the GFS really quick. Uh, it's a, the American model and see what it's saying. This is going to be the last one we look at. Uh, so let's kind of go ahead and move this forward. If it will, I think we're on a new model run. Yeah, a new model run just came out. Let me go back to the 06Z here. Push this forward. Yeah, strengthens right out of the gate. A uh, little bit weaker of a storm. Uh, you know, maybe a strong Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane here approaching land. Um but still, you know, a powerful storm a little bit further to the east than both than both the uh, the uh, the HVAS and the HWRF uh, model, but still a very strong storm. So there you go. Three models indicating a strong hurricane uh, coming into the Gulf of Mexico and making landfall still as a strong hurricane. So it looks like all the possibilities are we're going to be seeing a strong storm. So if you live anywhere from, you know, just north of Tampa, uh, all the way over to Destin, just in case we get some more wobbles in the models i want you guys to be preparing for this storm that's extra food non-potable food you know food that doesn't spoil uh you don't want to uh, you know you don't want your food going bad if you get no power you want to be able to eat it so that's why you get to get, get that food that doesn't expire or takes a long time to expire outside of a refrigerator also lots of extra water water bottles if you don't have enough money to get a bunch of water bottles right now fill your tub up with water make sure that it is completely completely filled because after that power goes out, you're not going to be able to refill it as a lot of that stuff is, you know, uh, works with electricity and that's going to be out. Also cash, you need cash on hand. The ATMs go down. Unfortunately, you're just not going to be able to pull cash out. You're not going to be able to use your credit card. So you need to be getting that cash 
right now. You want to have all your important documents there, um, you know, by your side and also have a plan to evacuate. If you live anywhere along the immediate coasts and this thing strengthens straight out of the gate like it's uh, like it's forecasted, it's very likely we're going to get a state of emergency in Florida if we haven't already. And also we're going to start to see some evacuations and probably a decent amount of them right along the coastal area where we think, uh, you know, the, 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 the this hurricane, the future hurricane Helene will make landfall. So please take these precautions now if you have already i know most of you guys have probably prepared but this is a strong storm it's gonna be a strong storm uh it definitely seems like um you know uh, it, it, it could be very bad but you know if it's not thank 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 whoever you want to thank um uh, but as of right now all the models on the averages of the models are not painting a good picture so don't second guess this storm you know we haven't seen this all year this one is looking serious all right guys unfortunately that's it for me uh thank you guys for tuning in i do appreciate everybody that keeps on coming back uh to the channel and giving your support it does help me out a lot you guys are making a dream come true and i do appreciate that but more importantly guys please you know i, I can't stress it enough just take this storm seriously and i will see you guys tonight i'll probably be doing a live forecast so i can answer your guys's questions live will be there should be an aircraft being uh flown into the storm sometime today we might uh initiate a stream for that uh or we'll just save that information for tonight's update but again thank you guys uh, for tuning in and i'll see you guys uh on the next live stream tonight